In 1938, America witnessed a moment that changed the entire railroad industry. An experimental locomotive departed from LaGrange, Illinois. On the outside, it looked unremarkable, but inside was something that signaled the downfall of the steam era. Two EMD 567 two-stroke diesel engines. What shocked everyone wasn't just that it worked efficiently. The unbelievable part was that EMD had chosen a path most engineers of the time considered impossible. A two-stroke engine in rail service most believed only a four-stroke engine could deliver the refinement, smoothness, and endurance needed for long-haul trains. Two strokes were thought to be noisy, crude, and impossible to scale. Yet it became the most successful locomotive power plant in history. This is the story of the EMD 567, the engine that redefined railroad power. When EMD introduced the 567 in 1938, the American railroad industry still believed in what seemed to be an unshakable truth. Any diesel engine meant for heavy work had to be a four-stroke. That was the engineering standard of the time. Four strokes were seen as smoother, more refined, and theoretically more fuel efficient. And two strokes, to most engineers, they were merely a stopgap solution, suitable for small boats, industrial generators, or equipment that didn't demand extreme reliability. But EMD saw the problem differently. Railroads didn't need mechanical elegance. They needed machines that were always ready, tireless, dependable, and free from the daily maintenance steam locomotives required. Locomotives had to be available on demand, running for hours, even days, at a steady speed. To achieve that, EMD chose a platform the rest of the world considered unsuitable for trains, the two-stroke uniflow diesel cycle. Unlike four strokes that produce power only once every two revolutions, the 567 generated a power stroke with every revolution. This not only increased power density, but also delivered a steady, continuous torque, the most vital factor for heavy rail traction. Its breathing system was what truly set it apart. As the piston moved downward, intake ports on the cylinder wall opened and compressed air from a roots blower flooded in. Exhaust gases were expelled through four poppet valves in the cylinder head. The process took place in fractions of a second, and thanks to one-way scavenging flow, there was no mixing of intake and exhaust gases and no pressure loss, unlike many other two-stroke engines. The roots blower played an irreplaceable role. It provided instant pressurization independent of RPM or exhaust heat. Whether the locomotive was idling in the yard or hauling freight uphill for hours, the engine maintained a consistent airflow, solid boost pressure, and uninterrupted power output. The cast alloy iron block formed an industrial backbone, strong enough to absorb the immense combustion forces of cylinders, displacing 567 cubic inches each. In 45-degree V configurations of 6, 8, 12, or 16 cylinders, total displacement could reach around 9,072 cubic inches. More importantly, it was optimized to operate at 800 RPM, producing long linear torque for hours, even days, on end. Inside, every moving part was built with the durability of military hardware. The connecting rods were forged from a single piece. Pistons were two-piece designs with a steel crown and aluminum skirt to withstand heat while cutting weight. The structure wasn't about mechanical beauty. It was about taking punishment and delivering relentless power. All auxiliaries were gear-driven instead of belt-driven. No slipping, no snapping, no power loss en route. EMD's design philosophy was simple. If something could wear, stretch, or fall out of tolerance over time, replace it with something solid. 
One of the defining features that made the 567 stand out was its unit injector fuel system. Instead of a single high pressure pump feeding long vibration prone lines, each cylinder had its own injector pump unit driven directly by the camshaft. No pulsating lines, no leaks. Every injection timed precisely to the heartbeat of the cam. The roots blower ensured the two-stroke engine always had stable forced induction, whether creeping lightly in the yard or hauling heavy loads uphill for hours. No lag, no dependency on exhaust heat. Every revolution produced power, none wasted. Seen as a whole, it's easy to understand why the 567 wasn't just an engine. It was an industrial traction platform forged from a philosophy of endurance, where every part, from connecting rod to camshaft to intake assembly, was created for one purpose, to keep the train moving, no matter the time or the demands of operation. But EMD didn't stop at building a powerful machine. They changed the very way the railroad industry thought about maintenance and repair. Instead of treating overhauls as inevitable downtime, EMD turned them into quick, modular procedures. The power assembly design was the key. Each cylinder was built as a self-contained, functional unit, liner, piston, connecting rod, sealing gaskets, and head assembly, all bolted together as one complete module. When maintenance was needed, technicians didn't have to dissect the engine layer by layer. They simply removed the old module and replaced it with one already prepared. The advantage was speed and control. A locomotive could be restored within a single work shift, while the removed module was rebuilt in the shop without interrupting operations. No scheduling delays, no blocked bays, no need for specialized craftsmen, as in the steam era. This approach transformed diesel locomotives from a run-rest-repair mindset into a continuous service cycle, the true spirit of modern industry. And when rugged mechanical design met fast maintenance philosophy, EMD went even further. They standardized everything so every locomotive in the fleet could operate and be serviced as one unified system. They weren't just selling engines. They were selling an entirely new operating philosophy for railroads. Before this, owning a locomotive fleet meant managing chaos. Every model, every builder, every generation requiring its own manuals, parts, and skills. EMD eliminated that chaos by creating a common engine family with shared architecture, interchangeable modules, and unified procedures. Water pumps, oil pumps, governors, intake assemblies, even electrical schematics, all followed the same logic. Then EMD established hands-on training centers where railroad technicians learned on real cutaway engines, electrical system mock-ups, and dedicated service tools. They didn't just learn how to repair, they learned how to sustain operational readiness. For EMD, the engine was no longer a product. It became a promise of uptime. And as the railroads adopted this new standard, the 567 followed a different path than most engines, evolution instead of obsolescence. In later years, many locomotives labeled as 567 actually carried newer 645 series power assemblies inside. EMD designed the 645 generation to fit directly into the 567C and 567D crankcases without replacing the entire engine. The result, locomotives that had been running for decades could keep working, stronger, cleaner, and more efficient than ever. This wasn't just an engineering upgrade, it was an economic strategy. Why buy a new locomotive when you could increase power simply by swapping modules? In the railroad world, where every hour of downtime means lost revenue, that solution 
was nearly perfect. Thanks to its philosophy of long-term upgradability, the EMD-567 proved its worth in the real world, finding its way into every corner of American railroading, from the long mountain grades of the West to the vast classification yards of the Midwest to transcontinental passenger routes. Wherever there was a train whistle, the steady two-stroke rhythm of an EMD could be heard. The most important milestone came with the GP7 in 1949, EMD's first true road switcher. It could haul heavy freight, work in yards, then continue onto mainline runs, flexibility that steam power could never match. Soon after came the GP9 in 1954, with improved electrical traction and higher output, becoming one of the most important locomotives in American rail history. For many railroads, a single GP9 could replace two or three steam locomotives. In yards, the SW7, SW9, and SW1200 switches proved the special advantage of the two-stroke engine under low-throttle stop-and-go conditions. Competing four-stroke designs often fouled plugs and lost torque at low loads, but the 567 never did. It was built for steady, tireless rhythm, hour after hour. On passenger lines, twin 567 engines in E7, E8, and E9, locomotives powered high-speed trains across the nation without stopping for water or coal. And even more impressive, if one engine failed, the train could still continue with the other. That redundancy wasn't just a feature. It was a true guarantee of reliability for passengers and schedules alike. By the 1950s and 60s, the 567 was no longer just pulling trains. It was redefining how America's railroads thought about operation itself. Speed, traction, and hill climbing power all mattered, but the real transformation lay elsewhere, in how the industry began to see time and resources. Steam locomotives had long stood as symbols of mechanical might, but at the cost of endless servicing cycles, refilling water, loading coal, cleaning flues, maintaining boilers, and keeping dedicated steam crews on hand. Every journey was a chain of stops, preparation, work, rest, repair. It was a rhythm of ceremony, not efficiency. The 567 entered and spoke a different language. No mid-run rest, no cooling pauses, no dependence on artisans. It introduced a new model, electricity delivered to the rails by diesel power, and turned time itself into an asset rather than a cost. The battle between diesel and steam wasn't a noisy duel. It was a quiet shift in economic logic, from keeping the machine alive to keeping the train moving. And when operators realized that efficiency, readiness, and duty cycle mattered more than the romantic plume of steam on the horizon, the steam age closed naturally. But diesel brought something more, an entirely new sound. If steam had evoked nostalgia, its long whistle and rhythmic wheel beats painting poetry across the rails, then the 567 arrived with a completely different voice, a steady, even growl. No drama, no theatrics, just the tireless heartbeat of machinery at work. It was the sound of metal, forced air, and combustion rhythm, the pulse of an industrial heart. That sound didn't come from refined rev matching, but from the firing stroke of every revolution and the breathing of the roots blower, an industrial exhalation with no pretense, no introduction, only purpose. Its growl became the soundtrack of a generation of engineers, railroaders, and the small towns where the 567 rumbled by each morning. And while steam left behind images, the 567 left behind rhythm, the pulse of continuity. As newer locomotives arrived 
and main lines transition to modern technologies, many assumed the 567 would fade into the past. But for an engine born to work, retirement simply meant changing battlefields. Locomotives powered by the 567 continued their service on branch lines in industrial yards, mining sites, seaports, and paper mills. In places where top speed mattered less than endurance and torque consistency, the 567 remained ideal. Operators favored it for one simple reason. It was hard to break, easy to fix, fully standardized in parts, and when something did fail, you simply swapped a module. The very philosophy that had once made it king of the main line. Many 567 blocks even found second lives in maritime service, tugboats, harbor craft, and industrial fishing vessels. The sea's harsh environment, long duty cycles, and need for massive torque at low RPM made it the perfect home for a two-stroke engine like the 567. And it didn't just survive, it thrived. The 567 also left its mark on backup power generation in hospitals, factories, military bases, and remote communities. When the grid went dark, people didn't need cutting-edge engines. They needed one that would start instantly and run continuously. The 567 delivered that without hesitation. Today, even as many units have been preserved in museums or tourist lines, hundreds still fire up every morning as if time had never passed. And in that familiar, deep, steady rumble, one realizes something. The 567 is not just old technology. It is trust, forged and proven through time. If you've ever heard the 567 roar to life on a cold morning or watched it haul heavy trains without a hint of complaint, share that memory in the comments below. For many, this wasn't just an engine. It was a piece of youth, a piece of America's industrial history, a mechanical heartbeat that once kept the nation moving. Have you ever driven one, maintained one, or simply stood by the tracks to feel that two-stroke rhythm in your chest? Tell your story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so we can keep exploring the machines that wrote the century of power and steel.